this video demonstration we're going to take the quadratic programming problem that we solved I mean that we formulated in, a, in our prior video lecture and I'm just going to show you how to put that into MATLAB to solve it in here so my code here I'm first I'm just setting up the plots this really isn't necessary to solve the problem but it's really good to help analyze the problem a little bit better so I define I take my two input variables x1 and x2 and I just define them over a grid from <clears throat> 0 to 10 each in increments of 0 0.1 so that's done by this mesh grid command then I define my cost so I define the value of the objective function over that whole range using this x1 and x2 that I had defined previously so this cost is now just a, a big matrix that has the cost at each of those points and if I want to plot that I use this contour function. So I plot x1 and x2 on the x-axis, the y-axis, and then costs on the z-axis. I do just some simple labeling. And that's how I plot the objective function. So remember before we had the constraints, our optimal point was here. Now I've got these other vectors defined um, that define those lines that were our inequality constraints. So if I now plot the first line, that's with this pretty simple command, and plotting the second line. <clears throat> so that's how I did the plotting for the in the previous video lecture. So now we're actually going to formulate and solve the optimization problem. So remember we figured out how to define the H matrix. So it's just as simple as plugging it into in the right MATLAB sy syntax. So we had remember we had 0 0.4 in the upper left and we had one in the bottom left and then we multiplied the whole thing by two so my H matrix just looks like that just like we defined this F vector looks like this we're going to define our inequality constraint matrices so A oops, A was that just as we defined and then B looks like that and then we define our lower bound vector and our upper bound vector. So LB is just a column vector of zeros and UB is just a column vector of tens. Okay, so now this is the, really the only command that we need. We've done all the pre-work to get everything organized. We took our scalar optimization problem and put it in matrix format so that the solver in MATLAB can handle this. And we're just gonna plug it into this quadprog function. So quadprog requires the matrix H to be our first input, then F to be our second. We need A that defines our inequality constraints, and B that also defines our inequality constraints. What goes here in these next spots are the equality constraints. So remember that problem didn't have any equality constraints. So we just put in empty matrices here, and then we put in our lower bound and our upper bounds here. And before I solve this, I'm going to show you how to get this format. So if I just type help quadprog, then MATLAB will give me a lot of really good information on how to use this function. So we are going to get, so there are various forms, so you can just type in HF A and B if you just have inequality constraints. <coughs> this gives us the form of the objective function that you've seen previously, so 1 half X transpose times H times X plus F transpose times X and that is, m we're minimizing that subject to A times X is less than or equal to B. If we wanted to have equality constraints, we use this form. And if we want to have inequality constraints, equality constraints, and input constraints, then we use this form. So this is the one we're using. X is equal to quad prog. We have our inequality constraints. We're putting in those empty matrices for our equality constraints and then we're putting in those simple vectors for our lower bound and upper bound. By solving this problem, this will give us the optimal combination of our inputs, x1 and x2. You can also have quadprog output some additional information. So if you scroll down here, you can have it give you this fval, which is the value, <coughs> the value of the objective function at the optimal solution. So x is the optimal solution, meaning the combination of x1 and x2 that result in the minimum cost and then this F val will be what that cost actually is. So we're going to solve this problem just by clicking one more step 
And what do we get? We get here's our optimal solution 4.62 and 6.62. So x1 is 4.62 and x2 is 6.62. And j here is the optimal cost. So j is minus 10.5. So you might be asking, how could a cost be negative? And the way this problem is formulated, it actually it can't be negative. It should be a positive number. But if you remember, our objective function was actually this cost plus 50. Remember, this constant additive term doesn't affect the optimal solution at all. It doesn't affect where the x1 and x2 are under optimal conditions. It just affects the total value of the objective function. So actually our total cost is j plus 50. So our total cost is 39.5. And I'm just going to take this last step and just plot this optimal solution so we can see where it is. <coughs> and you can see that optimal solution shows up here with the big red dot. So that's, as I mentioned in the previous video, most of the battle here is just getting this information correct. If you have all of this information correct, getting the solution to the problem can be trivial. It's not always that way, and sometimes you might need to get into the nitty-gritty of the way this, the solver is working, but for this particular problem it's quite easy.